So today's talk is a joint ICEV ICT presentation. Uh, it's about using uh, MSC small extracellular viscous for clinical testing. So um, this is my disclosure. Um, part of the presentation was already presented at the AMAC organized by the US FDA a couple of months ago. Now MSC uh, EVs are as you know, are derived from MSC, and MSCs are the most clinically tested, uh, clinically tested cells. And it's been shown that these EVs mediate uh, the therapeutic activity of parental MSC in head-to-head -head comparison. And uh, in this case, the size do matter. So in 2010, we showed that the active fraction was greater than 1,000 kilodalton and less in a 0.2 micron filtered uh, condition medium. And in 2017, Kamusi Group showed that the 160 nanometer, but not the 210 nanometer EVs, were therapeutic. And so right now, the general consensus is that the 50 to 200 nanometer particles are the active uh, agent in the condition medium. And the 200 nanometer is very convenient for us because it is the upper size limit uh, limited by the 0.2 micron filtration. And as we move further, we found that the MSC EVs are now uh, moving into clinical trials. In fact, of the more than 21, of the 21 clinical trials registered at the clinical, clinical are derived from MSCs. So um, translating MSC into a, a EV into a drug uh, has many challenges. The most difficult one is actually the scalable and reproducible manufacture of the EVs as a drug. So um, the, the challenge in manufacturing MSC EV for clinical trial is really about ensuring that it's reproducible in its identity and potency. So there are two, four major key components in the EV manufacturing process that we there is of particular consideration. One is the cell source, the cell expansion and conditioning process, the EV enrichment technique, and the release of the EVs as a drug substance. Now, the cell source. Some of the major considerations in the cell source are that these, most of the time we use primary MSCs or we use MSC that are derived from pluripotent stem cells. However, when you use these cells, there's several challenges. Once these are very heterogeneous, and they also have a finite lifespan. The heterogeneity of this MSC comes from the donor, from the tissue, and even within a cell population, they can be very heterogeneous. And added to that, they all have a very finite lifespan. You can only expand them for several passages, so you have to keep renewing this. And therefore, it makes them very irreproducible. Now, to, to mitigate this uh, heterogeneity between donor and tissue, uh, one way is to use a pluripotent stem cell derived MSC because it's a single source. However, the pluripotent stem cell derived MSC are also heterogeneous in itself because within a single cell culture, you can find that they are quite different. And also, the pluripotent stem cell derived MSC also, like the primary MSC, have a finite lifespan. So in about 10 years ago, uh, my lab proposed that one way to circumvent all this problem is to immortalize the cells and then clone the cells. However, when you, when you immortalize and clone the cells, there's always the risk of tumor regenicity. First, there's a concern about the reproducibility of the efficacy of the EVs. Can the immortalized cells still produce uh, therapeutic EVs? And we show that uh, although the MSC loses many of its typical MSC characteristics, they retain the therapeutic activity of the EVs. The next concern is about tumor regenicity. Would the cells become tumorigenic and the cells or the EVs promote tumor growth? 
And we show that by transplanting the cells in a -time, new atymic mice and show that it does not form tumors. Also, it does not grow independently in soft agar. Finally, we also observed that the, when we inject them into a human tumor xenograft in a atymic mice, they do not promote the growth of the tumor. The next one is cell expansion. So um, the, the cell expansion for MSC is quite generic, so there's a lot of precedent in the industry on growing MSC. There's not, it's not much different from growing MSC for EV culture. The important part here is the conditioning of the media for EV production. One of the major problems in this process is the presence of exogenous EV in the conditioning medium. And this exogenous EV could come from the serum or human platelet lysate. And to circumvent this, we could use EV depleted serum or EV depleted human platelet lysate, or alternatively, we can use chemically defined medium. Okay. The next uh, is EV enrichment. Again, uh, this is uh, a problem that is not a real problem because there's a lot of industry precedents already. So most commonly used EV enrichment technique are based on uh, biophysical parameters such as size and density. And uh, the most commonly used technique in the past in the lab is ultra centrifugation. As you can imagine, this is not a good technique for the industry because it's not scalable. The most commonly used now is TFF, tangential flow uh, filtration. Okay, and there's not much. Uh, mystery to this technology is well established in the field. Now, the next is the release of the drug substance. This is the biggest challenge in the manufacture of the EVs as a drug. The major challenge is really, do we have the, what we call the critical quality attributes for identity and potency? The identity CQAs are primarily the, the the uh, metrics that will quantitatively describe the product as a preparation that is enriched in 50 to 200 nanometer biological lipid membrane vesicles produced by MSC. And the potency CQA is to quantify the attribute most re relevant to the mechanism of action. And this essentially measures the potency of the product. And we will need to certify both CQAs in order to release the drug. Now, for the MSC EV identity, um, Bern Gilbert and I organized a workshop in 2018. So we have uh, experts from Socrates, ICT, ICEV uh, coming together to uh, uh, recommend metrics that will do exactly what we need to do. And we came up with four metrics. One is the concentration of surface antigen, MSC surface antigen. The second one is the number of particles per unit weight protein of membrane lipids and the molar diameter. The third uh, metric is the molar weight ratio of protein to membrane lipids. And the fourth one is to measure the biochemical activity of the cargo, example, the CD73 enzyme activity. Now, with the identity matrix, it, what does it mean to have a similar, similar, similar identity uh, CQA? Now, within a process, that is, if it comes from the same process, it would mean that these are the same product. But if it's made with different processes, then we cannot conclude that it is an identical product. Because we know that MSC EV is very complex in its composition. So, for example, the proteome of MSC EVs from different processes are very different, even though they could have the same CQAs, identity CQAs. Therefore, what it tells us is that similar CQAs is not equal to the identical products. Therefore, in order to show that our products are similar or not, dis or not similar, we should not only use the identity CQAs, but also we must define the process by which we make the product. So this is what we call the process-defined product uh, paradigm. 
The next one is potency. Again, we have similar group of people gathering in Singapore to look at how do we define potency uh, or the potency CQAs. And the general consensus is that to have very robust potency CQA, we need to understand the mechanism of action. The, the, the problem here is that different, the same uh, preparation can have efficacy against many diseases. And MSCEV preparation with different identity can have similar efficacy against one disease. So how does that work? It is possible because, as I said earlier, MSCEV are very complex. So it's possible that one MSCEV could have many attributes that could work against different diseases. By the same token, MSCEV, which have different uh, CQ, identity CQAs or different processes could have different potency attributes that target different pro, uh, steps in the pathology process and therefore they can have the same uh, efficacy. So, uh, in so, so in conclusion, uh, potency parameters will be the disease specific to the disease as well as specific to the MSCEV preparation. Oh, sorry, sorry. So in summary, the key challenges in the manufacturing is cell, the cell source, the culture, the enrichment process, and the drug release criteria. Now, um, I'd like to touch a little bit quickly on the contaminants, as there's a lot of talk today about contaminants. So in the MICEF 2018 suggests that we use albumin as a marker for medium contamination. Now, what I'm going to show you is that it's not likely it could be a legitimate cargo of EVs. So, um, so the key points that got to start is that albumin is endocytosed by most cells. And mem the membrane priority of these endocytose cells is preserved in the exosomes. That is, if the, endocyto the endocytose uh, protein will remain on the outside of the exosomes. And the transit time from endocytosis to secretion is four hours. So we did this experiment to ask if, and if albumin is endocytose and is, if this is secreted in the exosomes, what happened? So what we did was we paused the MSC with labor exos, uh, albumin, and we showed that the albumin was secreted in, with large particles by uh, concentrating the conditioned media against 100 kilodalton uh, membrane filter. And then what we observed is that the, when we follow the uh, secretion of BSA, we find that uh, there was secretion of BSA uh, after the chase. And then, uh, but with immunoglobulin, we find that it doesn't, uh, it, there's no secretion. So the next one is what we observe is that the first point of secretion is at four hours. There's, that ties in with the four hours transit time. And also we find that the peak of the uh, BSA secretion was in line with the CD73 kinetics. So uh, we can see by flow cytometry that the albumin is also on the outside of the exosomes. So with that, I think I come to my time limit. So albumin is not a good marker of medium contamination because it can be endocytose. By the same token, LDL is endocytose by, by cells. Therefore, it could also be a legitimate cargo of exosomes, but it will be on the outside, as Edie uh, mentioned early today. So with that, I think I'm done. Thank you very much.